Welcome from the beautiful Disney's Riviera Resort, where it turns out the best way to get Lorcana news is to just not have internet for several hours while you're on a plane. Go figure. Yes, there's nothing quite like touching down and having your phone turn right back on to tons of notifications going off with Disney Lorcana, Disney Lorcana. New card, new card, new card. Let's get into the news for the glimmers of Lorcana. So we have breaking international news from the Nuremberg Toy Fair. The pre-show was today on the 31st, and the actual convention itself was going to be running from the 1st of February through the 5th of February. So there may still be some spoilers that end up leaking out throughout the next week. So stay tuned. I know we will, even though we're on vacation. I fully expect there's going to be more spoilers. Uh, for those who are not aware, the Nuremberg Toy Fair is a trade show. So it's not like Gen Con or one of the other conventions where you could just pay to get in. It's for tradesmen, it's for press, and it's for invited guests. So I don't think they're going to give all of their news during the pre-show. Um, they're going to have press for the next few days. So I expect fully expect that there's going to be more for them to show because they got to keep it interesting for the weekend, right? We now know that not only... Do we have the four sets that are being coming out each year? They are going to be for 200 plus individualized arts, which at this time is the most art being designed through any Disney licensing properties. That's right. So if you're an independent artist who likes to draw Disney characters for a profit, Get working, they're beating you. And maybe hit them up, because they are probably going to be needing a lot of artists. And they have That's shown they have shown that they are um, willing to work with a wide variety of different talents. So we do have a bit of a interview that was posted on Twitter. What do you think makes Locana so special? We have put together, so first of all, the, the, the art. I mean, I think that that's the first thing that comes to my mind. We uh, are doing all new art. Uh, most of the art is going to show the characters the way you know and love them, but a, uh, the rest of the art is going to show them in these reimagined ways, and I think that is what makes it very exciting to me, is that uh, we get to take these wonderful characters uh, and really kind of show them in, in new light. You can see here we've got like this amazing Aurora piece here, uh, which is much more, you know, uh, reimagined, fantastical. Hades is one of my favorite pieces there as well, uh, like you've never seen him before. And then one of my favorite pieces in the entire set is the uh, Brave Little Taylor, uh, Mickey Brave Little Taylor. It's, yeah, it's, it's amazing, awesome. but there's so much more in the set. I mean, we're doing over 200 pieces of art in every set, four times a year. We're adding more new art uh, than any Disney product in history. So it is just very, it's just very exciting. And what's the big difference uh, in comparison to other TCGs? So I think, you know, uh, I think it's easier to pick up than a lot of other TCGs. Uh, but still, has, one of the things I love about, I mean, I've been working in trading card games for about 20 years now. And uh, one of the things I love about trading card games is that you can have complex strategy but the game itself can be easy to pick up so the best of both worlds right you've got new players who are able to pick up the game learn the basics and get to playing and then if you're a veteran card gamer there's these combos and these decks uh there there are things to find for you there are strategies for you to find we've got a game design team it's headed up by steve warner who is absolutely one of the best in the business when it comes to game design card design and development so uh, if you're a veteran card gamer, this this has got there's a lot here for you. This is I'm very excited for you to open this game up and start playing. <laughs> <laughs> and now the most important question: When do we get to see the first gameplay? Uh, so that's going to be in spring. Uh, so it's coming up fairly quick. Um, but yeah, in spring we're going to start showing gameplay so that you can uh, start seeing what what we've got in store for you. If you're as excited as we are after listening to that interview, uh, there were a lot of little tidbits from the fact that. Uh, Steve Warner is the uh, lead card designer of the cards that are going to be made. And, I mean, he's rather well-known in the Magic community for designing 
and implementing different types of gameplay. So we know he already has a proven track record. As for the actual meat and potatoes that you are here to see, we have Mulan's rarity symbol. Yes, uh, a couple pieces of art were spoiled. Uh, basically, it's extending on art that we've already seen. So, for example, we've already seen the Mulan character art and um, some of her ability information. We've also seen Aurora's character art, but no of her character information. And now we have a bit more. Uh, so with Mulan, we got to see the rarity symbol, which if it tracks the way that we have that we think it will based on the other rarity symbols we've seen, that would put her at a uh, standard rare, uh, which I think was a com is a compelling argument that Hades will probably end up being a standard rare as well because mm -hmm. he's the other face card of the gift set. And it would be a little bit weird for there to be a dual faced gift set where the face characters are different rarities. Um, I don't think I've seen that in a product before in any of the games I've played, so it's a little un that would be a little unusual. Uh, that is just speculation, but we have actually seen her rarity symbols spoiled. So It is now known that she is absolutely the same rarity as Robin Hood and as Floodborne Stitch. And without further ado, we have Aurora Dreaming Guardian. It has been announced and spoiled now on that card that she is a Sapphire Floodborne. Which would make her the first non-Amber character to be a Floodborne and have the shift ability noted on the card. That's right. In addition to Stitch and Hades, which, as we know, are Amber cards that have the Bloodborne and shift ability. She is now joining their ranks, but she is going to be a Sapphire card. This does lead us to believe that it is not something that is relegated to a specific ink color, but instead is something that could be any color and is instead shift is probably more just for Floodborns. Exactly. Yeah. Um, she is a five cost for three five, and she has a new type on it. Yeah, she's she's introducing the mechanic Ward to Lorcana. Uh, so Ward works like Hexproof from Magic the Gathering, in that it makes it so that opponents can't target your. Uh, any creature that has ward, or any character that has ward, sorry. So she does not give herself ward, just to your other characters, uh, which is actually a pretty neat little balancing thing. Um, that's something that uh, Wizards of the Coast had to learn in Magic the Gathering, that you should not give a, cre a creature that gives an ability like that the ability itself. Um, they've had a lot of issues in the past with characters, uh, creatures that had shroud, um, hexproof and indestructible. Um, Addison Angel's Hope is notorious for that. Um, they found that if you only give other creatures slash characters the ability, you can still take care of the one that's giving it. So they have to go through hoops to take care of everything, but it still gives them the ability to play back and play against it. Um, it just makes their life more difficult, but it, it's better to be difficult than impossible. So um, I do think this is really good because it's showing that the creators of Lorcana um, and the designers of Lorcana are really learning their lessons from other games. Um, as we're talking about, you know, we have people who have been working on, who have worked with Magic the Gathering and other card games previously as part of the team. Uh, Ravensburger has also noted that they are like really doing their research and it's showing. Definitely showing. Yeah. Uh, this is showing it, this is going to start as a more mature style game in that it's not going to have the growing pains that a lot of card games have when they first come out with wonky um wonky mechanics uh, they're just they're already they've already learned the lessons from everyone else like they've already everyone else has already built the foundation they're just building upon it which means it's going to be able to come out of the gate a lot stronger than a lot of other card games. Which I think is one of the keynotes to take away from that interview 
was as he had stated. It is being designed to be a simple game to play and a complex game to master. So there are different complexity levels. You can pick it up and learn very simply how to play the game. And once you learn how to play the game, it is easy. But once you look at the cards and how the different cards play and interact, you might see, oh, if I use this card and then this card and then this card, it'll be a little bit better than if I use this card, then this card, then this card. And those types of combos, those types of intricacies are the types of things that get built up into the more sophisticated types of things similar to Magic the Gathering, but where magic is a little bit more advanced. Um, it has the problem of being a little bit too wordy by this point. Well, the, the thing with magic, um, and Yu-Gi-Oh has this problem too specifically, not to, not to name names, but those two. Um, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh with their, their walls of text and their let's lay out our hands and yeah. win before we do anything. Well, the thing is, those games, um, a lot of the interactions that get super complex that really bog down the game, that you know make people think really hard, you have to really play with the stack and things, a lot of those are new cards interacting with old cards, and the old cards were the clumsy mechanics as they were kind of figuring things out. So the good thing about Lorcana is because they're learning their lesson from, and they're not using older mechanics, and they're not, they're trying to keep it as clean and um, easy as possible. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have those types of interactions. You should still have good, thoughtful deck building with you know interesting and fun mechanics. And you can absolutely do that. Marble Snap is um, a IP that came out recently, and there it's very so clean and many easy. Different combos that you can do, and yes, there's a meta. Yeah. But there are different metas that you can find yourself in, yeah. and different levels of play that you can find yourself in. Yeah, but the key thing is, like, there's a lot of depth and there's a lot of nuance, mm -hmm. but it's not bogged down like some of the other card games. And again, we're going to kind of note Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic because they had some of the worst growing pains in Magic because they are the frontier card game. Um, some of their older mechanics are just awful, and the way the cards read and how they work are just... If they knew back, if they knew back in 1993 what they knew now, they, those cards would never have existed the way they did. Um, I fully believe that. Which and, has literally happened quite often with several cards being completely eroded to say the opposite of what is on the card. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Lorcan has learned those lessons and they should be avoiding that. Um, it feels like they're going to try and keep the modern feel of like a Magic the Gathering, but try and keep it to the level of Pokemon, which has a lot of good interaction, a lot of um, strategizing, but it's not bogged down you're not going to get interactions between 10 12 cards that are just ridiculous and things like that so um yeah i think that we're showing a lot of a lot of good stuff with this exactly and with that there's just more that we know is going to be coming even further down the line they have stated that they are not going to be releasing official game rules until the springtime but there's just so much more that can be speculated on and so much more that can be spoiled in between now and official gameplay rules that i think we're just going to be seeing a lot between now and spring well, they didn't just say they want to spoil the rules by spring. They wanted to show Official gameplay, game mm -hmm. which means if uh, we don't get a full spoiler of the entire set, we're probably going to get a very healthy chunk of cards because um, they're going to have to at least spoil enough cards for us to be able to follow the gameplay videos and things that they put out. So within the next three months or so, um, again, spring is all they told us, so we don't know if that's early or late, so we'll just average it and say about three 
we should be seeing a pretty good chunk of cards and also some gameplay and be really ready. I basically, I'm expecting that they're going to spoil the three decks. That would be the idea. The three single player decks. They'll get those fully spoiled and they'll use those for all of their gameplay stuff because they're already tuned to play against each other. They're going to be balanced against each other, which should uh, create good back and forth, which is what they're going to want for their for their promotional material. All right. Well, let's uh, go ahead and wrap that up here and keep an eye on the channel for further updates. We will be doing a little bit of a further deep dive into the uh, Aurora card to get into the nitty gritty details because this was just a very brief overview. Um, so keep an eye on that as well. But I hope you have a magical day. I know we will be having some on our vacation. And make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And share. Oh, Please share. Yes, share. That would be very helpful be as well. That way we can be spreading the glory of Lorcana to as many people as possible. We need our Lorcana army to be growing. Uh, that way we have the people that are currently in the, well, I might be buying it just to speculate on it and never going to open the box and turning them into Die Hard. I'm going to open those boxes and I'm going to play those cards and I am going to be a converted player. And that's what we need for this to explode and go forward into the future. I just like to know that people are listening to me. <laughs> that too. But uh, we will head off now and uh, you have a wonderful day.